What's up guys, it's Logan here from the Motorcycle Forge and today we're going to be learning about compression ratios. Now, first thing you've got to know is there's two types of compression ratio. There's your theoretical compression ratio, which is what you can work out with maths, and there's the actual running compression ratio, which that's when the engine's going, because it's not going to be exactly the same, because your, your cylinder pretty much doesn't have 100% efficiency, and if it does, you've probably got a big ass turbo on it. First, we're going to show you how to work out the static compression ratio. Now, you're going to need a couple tools when you're working out your static compression ratio. Now, this makes it super easy. This is a burette. It's plastic, cheap as chips. I highly recommend using one of these. There is other things you can use instead of this, but I would highly recommend getting one. Also, you're going to need tools to take apart your engine because you need your engine in bits to actually measure this correctly. Now the first and easiest thing we need to work out is the stroke of your engine. So I would just do a quick Google search on your engine and you should be able to figure it out. And pretty much the stroke is how far your piston travels up and down when it's in operation. Next thing you need to work out is the bore and that is how wide it is. So give a quick measure. So we've got 64 mil bore. Right, now you've got those two values, just put that aside and we'll save that for later. Now we've got to work out the combustion chamber volume and that is a bit more complicated. So the first part we need to figure out for our combustion chamber volume is the squish. Now the squish is pretty much when your engine's running, how close your piston gets to the cylinder head. Now the quickest and most accurate way to measure your squish is with plasticine. So pretty much you just grab a couple little bits of plasticine, stick them to the piston and the flat spots which will get close to the cylinder head and then once you got that on there grab your cylinder head chuck it on and bolt it down now you don't need to add anything else you don't need your camshafts you don't need your chain or timing or anything just the head on there if it's a two stroke you don't have to worry about any of that rotate your engine over once take the head back off and then grab some verniers or whatever measuring equipment you got and measure how thick your plasticine is Next thing we need to measure, now this isn't all of you, this is only people with dished pistons. So if you've got cutouts in your piston for your valves, or your piston's not flat and it's got a dish in it like this one, we need to measure that volume. Now first thing we're going to do is, you need the piston clean. So this, this, all this crap on here, this is going to affect our outcome and it's not going to give you an accurate compression ratio in the end. Right, to measure our piston volume, we've got it somewhat clean. We've got a sheet of plastic here with a big hole in the middle and a couple small holes around the edge. So we're going to stick this to here with some grease and the small holes allow the air to escape when we're putting water into the middle hole and we're going to put the water in using our measuring burette. Right, to zero our burette, fill it up above the zero so the zero is there and then you just turn your tap, let the water out till it goes down to exactly the zero mark and then you're good to go. Right, with the piston full to the brim, we have a look at our burette, and when we're holding it level, it's at the 2.6 line, so that's 2.6 cc or 2.6 mils. So now, let's add that to the list. Now, to measure the combustion chamber in the cylinder head is the exact same process as we just done for the piston. Now, this should be clean. You should have no carbon on your valves. For the sake of this video, just pretend it is a brand new super clean combustion chamber the intake valves on this head actually stick up further than flush so i have a couple wee grooves now same again when it's full check your measurement on the burette and add it to the list now when you're cc'ing your cylinder head i want you to do it three times and that's so that you get a good average and you're not going to make any mistakes now that we've got all these values listed down on a bit of paper, we can move to a whiteboard and do some quick maths and figure out our theoretical compression ratio. No! I'm going to make it super easy, you don't need a fancy calculator, so just follow along and you should be all good. The only complicated thing is pi radius squared, so pi is 3.14 radius, so the, our bore is 64 millimeters, radius is half. So radius is 32, and squared just means times itself. So we've got 32 times 32 times pi equals, now that is millimeters squared. So that is the area of our circle. Now, what we need to do is convert that into volume. So volume is this here. This is our cylinder. 
So we need to times that by the length, which is our stroke. So if we get that, so 3215 times 48.8 equals 156909. Now, that is millimeters cubed. And to convert that to cc, which is what most engines are measured in, we pretty much just get rid of that. Move the decimal place to there, change that to centimeters. So there, 156.9 centimeters, or we could just round it to 157 cc. That is our cylinder volume. Now we just need to work out our squish. So I've already done some maths, but pretty much using the same equation, 0 0.8, so we still do this equation here, and then we times that, instead of by that, we times it by 0 0.8, which is the thickness of our squish, and that gives us, over there, 2.57. So now, combustion chamber volume at the top, head, piston, squish. So we add these three volumes and that gives us our combustion chamber volume, 14.37. So that is this volume here. Right, now we're on the home stretch. We've got these two values. Now what we've got to do is we've got to add them together. So 157 plus 14.37 equals 171.37. That's our complete volume. And now we need to take our 171.37 Divide that by a combustion chamber volume, which is 14.37. That gives us 11.92 to 1, and that is our compression ratio. Now that you've worked out what your compression ratio is, you're going to want to know how to increase it. Now the easiest, cheapest way to do it is to fit a thinner head gasket and a thinner base gasket. That's the go-to for most engine builders to do it affordably. The more expensive way to do it is to fit forged high compression parts. Now, there's two things to keep in mind when you're upping your compression. Make sure you can get rid of the extra heat created and make sure your engine can handle the extra strain. Now, a way to test the compression on your motorcycle is a compression tester. So this goes in where your spark plug goes. You'll kick over your engine or start a button, wide open throttle so as much air can get in as possible and it'll let you know the compression of your engine, or well, the condition really. So it's not so much the compression ratio as well as just checking that everything in your engine's working correctly so that your rings are sealing, your valves are sealing, um, you haven't got a blown head gasket, things like that, it'll let you know with a compression tester. If you enjoyed this video and you're after serious horsepower out of your engine, then I'd highly recommend checking out this video here. Otherwise, this has been Logan from the Motorcycle Forge. I hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you next time.